Hello everyone. This is the second lesson in the black hole series and today we are going to be starting our first accretion disk. This is going to be the emission and absorption based one. So this is a lot faster and this is the one that's in the intro animation, the one where I'm coming out, out of the clouds. The, this is the same one as that. So that's what we're going to be starting on making and uh, I'm going to keep this relatively brief and instead of having one long tutorial, it's going to be two or three uh, shorter ones, about 10-15 minutes in length, so that they are all easily digestible. And yeah, so without further ado, let's get started. In today's tutorial, instead of um, we're going to actually start by doing some non-volumetric work, which is basically just meaning. So we're setting up some of the basic noise that we're going to be using in the volumes. Um, and this is a bit of a complex process. So, yeah. Um, by the way, I did a little bit of off-screen work. Uh, and that's just messing with the values in the lensing setup. And I'll take a moment so that you can pause it and copy these values if you want to get what I'm doing. Um, Alright, let's go ahead. So um, this the cylinder that we, or this circle thing, donut, flat donut, that we have here is going to be basically a marker for what our accretion disk is going to look like. So we want to roughly match up the values, um, we want to roughly match up the relative sizes there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hide the lensing setup because we don't need that. That's going to be a cool effect but it's going to slow us down. So let's add in a cylinder. So I'm going to center my view and I'm going to add in a cylinder. I like to use a relatively high amount of vertices here. And let's scale it down on the z-axis because accretion disks Disks are thin. Let's scale it up on everything but the Z axis. That's S Shift Z. Then we are going to select the bottom and top face, and we are going to press I to inset, and then S or E S Z zero, and delete the faces. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select all and press the M to merge by distance and from here you can select uh, you can select this edge press X dissolve edges and that will simplify the geometry a bit so yeah let's match these up a little bit more that is pretty good okay so now we're going to add a new material we are going to call this accretion disk And we're going to delete the principled, and we're just going to add in a shader emission. So let's start working on the noise. So last episode, or last lesson, last whatever you want to call it, we made a node group called the cylindrical chords. So we are going to use this right now to control our noise. So let's add in a Musgrave texture. Now this gets you a very interesting look. It's fractal, so it's not going to look... Well, let's first set it to the proper, proper setting. I use rigid multifractal. And I find this looks best when you have very low dimension, very high gain, and high detail. See, this gives you that sort of look. Now it's a bit iffy right now because you still, I mean it's a fractal so there are areas that look a bit unnatural um, and you can do a few things with that. You can uh, mess with the UVs to try and get something that looks a little bit more presentable um, but what I like to do is I like to, a good initial step and we're going to do a bunch of stuff to help correct for that and a converter map and I set this to power and I put this to two or three, and this really 
ups the contrast so we get only higher detail levels are showing through. So that's that's a good start. Um, so if we're going to look at the, let's look at the old black hole for reference here. I'm going to bring up a picture of that. Here we go. So you can see we have a decent amount of detail in here. I rendered out a nice like 8K texture. So we see that we have these long bands that go around it. There's very, yeah, they're very long. So let's see if we can get the uh, Musgrave texture to match the in this general shape. So I'm going to turn down this scale on the y-axis to sort of stretch it out. And I'm going to turn up the gain quite a bit here. That's going to make it a little bit more full. And then uh, you can mess around with this a bit. I'm actually going to start at 1. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, I'm actually, I'm going to, we can try an alternative later on because this looks a bit unrealistic how it's stretched out further out here, out here than it is down here. Um, here, I'll just go through it really quickly right now. Uh, I'm not going to do this for much of these, but if you want to set this to 4D, use the input texture coordinate object. And then for your W, add a converter, vector math, and set this to length, add a converter math, this is just going to multiply, this is going to change the intensity of it, and plug this into the W. You see you can get a similar effect, and this time it's actually, I believe, the insides that are stretched out a bit more. Um, but I am not going to use this because I'm simply not a huge fan of it. But you can certainly do this if you so desire. Just, yeah, your car is 40 and I don't like 40. So let's change this back to 3D. Put that right there. Maybe set it to 5 delete this. Matter of, so it's a matter of personal preference. Um, similar processes for both. Just replace using this with that method if you want to do that. Up to you of course. Alright, so we're going to use some different textures to highlight different levels of detail here. Uh, not different levels of detail. I'm sorry, I'm trying to find the right words. Um, we're going to mix and match a few different textures to try and get the type of detail we want. So, actually, let's add in a noise texture, just a regular noise texture. And we're going to plug this. We're going to add in a, to duplicate this, set this to multiply. Then add in a color ramp. And you want to set the detail and roughness up a bit. This is going to be rather high contrast, so we're isolating some elements of our uh, our accretion disk that we don't really want shining through. Okay. So that I think looks pretty good. Let's add some, so we can see that this is clearly, it's very stretched out, right? See all of that? So let's fix that a bit, because that might look good from over here, right? But we don't, it doesn't look great from up top, above. So let's, it, let's add in a texture, a noise texture and a vector mapping and I'm going to plug this or actually no let's duplicate this 
and I'm going to set this to like three or something to get a little bit less stretching. Actually, you know what? For this one, this might be good. Let's let's use the other method. So set to forty and a texture. Uh, or sorry, yeah, input texture coordinate. Uh, vector math and length not UV we want this object plug this into the W and object output and let's add a math multiply If that's a power you need to multiply. I wonder it's looking a bit funky. So mess with this until you get something you like. I think that's good. Let's change the detail up, a little bit more roughness. I'm gonna put this into the scale. Actually I'm going to first, because that's a bit not separate. Uh, combine XYZ and we're going to scale the X value based on that. Actually, no, sorry. I'm being a silly here. Let's um, don't listen to what I just said. We're going to use a mix RGB. Set this to subtract, just leave it at the default value, but slide the factor to 1. Converter math, or not converter math, color, mix RGB. Multiply and add an A value to control this. And we are going to add it, or you can just put it into the location of your texture, of your mapping node. Um, so let's control the, let's slowly push these values around. I'm going to duplicate this in case we want some individual settings. So that may be a bit much, yeah. This is why we duplicate stuff. So we want something, we want this to be um, adding some detail radially. Um, yet we still want it to preserve the sort of feeling, not feeling, preserve the look of the musk scrape texture. So set it to like 0.01, try that. Change the detail up a little bit. I think that looks pretty good. I'm actually I'm going to change this to B spline and uh, add another power here. Just do that a bit so we still get some lights. I'm going to duplicate this power node and just mess with it a little bit. So that's looking pretty good. Now you can add more detail, more noise. You can overlay a lot of different textures. Like uh, I'm going to show you quickly how big the original node tree was. And that's because for the for each of these, I'm using four different textures. Um, and the nice thing is that since they're just combining textures over here, right, and over in there, uh, you can expand upon it later if you are unsatisfied. Uh, and that's what we're going to be doing later, probably, because this might or might not look great.
but we'll see. We will definitely see. So I think that's about it for this tutorial. Mess with this a bit, add in some more textures. Um, experiment with the Musgrave texture a lot. Um, there are many different interesting types. So for instance, I'm going to just show you. So this is what the default type looks like. Um, but there's also there's the regular multifractal, which is a bit uh, more traditional noise. Then there's the hybrid multifractal, which looks just really weird. Uh, let's see if we can even get it to work properly. Yeah, it looks a bit weird, but it's kind of cool. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly how this works. You can try it later. And then this hetero terrain, it's sort of like multiplying a noise by the um, regular uh, multifractal. It's quite interesting, and it has like a more porous sort of feel. So, actually, I'm going to try. I'm going to try something here. I think this might look cool. Just before we end, so I'm going to choose maximum. And I'm going to set this to zero to make sure we aren't getting any values below zero because that can really screw things up. Um, so let's instead multiply this by that. That's pretty interesting. That's a really interesting look, isn't it? What I might want to do is I might want to Increase the scale a bit. Eh, now nah, I'm just going to keep it with the original noise. I think that looks, that still looks about the same. It doesn't have some of the problem. But that's that. So I'm going to sign off. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. In next tutorial, we are going to make this actually work like a volumetric accretion disk should. Um, so that would be mainly we're going to work on masking. So basically we're going to make it so that this falls off towards the edges and doesn't just get clipped off. And also we'll be able to control the height more precisely. And then in the tutorial after that we're going to be adding some additional details. Um, we're going to add a few more noise layers probably. So we're going to have, like you'll see, in you'll see in this we have a few different layers of emission so we have uh, the first emissive material which is what we sort of just started making which is the thick one that's in the main accretion disk and then there's an absorption layer that goes along with that um, but you see we also have others like uh, the most apparent one is this sort of haze and then so I actually I believe I have multiple different hazes one that goes that's more focused on out here and one that's more focused on sort of emulating the uh, sort of scattering of light from these large emissive patches uh, so yeah this is a relatively complex material uh, but hopefully uh, we can make it, hopefully I can make it quite digestible, and uh, yeah, so I'm going to sign off, have a good day, and happy blending to you, and I hope you have learned something from this, and go off and experiment on your own a bit, okay? Try and make something cool. Don't follow the tutorial step by step. There's a lot of room in this project, especially for creative freedom. So, please 
please do that. You'll learn so much more. Um, yeah, that's probably the most important thing I'd say. So that's it for me, guys. Have a good one. Check out my various social medias in the description. Uh, join the Discord server if you want to have some fun. I'll also be answering tech support questions on there as well as in the comments. Um, and a few people have asked me so far, I want to touch on this briefly before I sign off, a few people have asked me if I'm going to be posting the blend files and I, as of right now, I am not going to do that because I think that you don't learn anything by just downloading blend files. Uh, I have the old blend file for another black hole that you can find on the server, but you will not find this blend file. You will not find the blend file for this black hole or any other ones that we're going to be creating. And I can explain more as to why, um, but I'm thinking of creating a Patreon that has these black holes these blend files um, because I understand a lot of people don't have the time to go through hours of tutorial videos so that will come later and yeah that's it for me have a good one